Okay, today we're going to look at chapter 13.3, which is the rate of change. So basically, what is a rate of change? It basically tells us how one thing is changing in relation to another. For example, jogging speed. Jogging speed is like how many meters you cover per second. Okay, or heartbeat rate. So how many beats per minute. So if we want to find the rate of change of a function y is equal to fx, with respect to x, we find the change, like just now we try, we are finding the change in distance, okay, over time. So it's meter per second. So now for in terms of a function y equals to fx, we are looking at the change in y, okay, y2 minus y1 divided by the change in x, x2 minus x1. Basically the ratio y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. This should look familiar to you. This has been, we'll be doing this again and again. This is actually the slope or the gradient. For a linear function, the rate of change is constant. So as we have learned from uh, secondary two, okay, any point that you find on a straight line, the gradient is equal. So in this case, it has a constant rate of change. So it means that for example, if in this example, if the gradient of this graph is equal to two, it means that for every unit okay, of x that we move, Okay, forward, you will have uh, two units upwards for the uh, y value. So no matter where you go, uh, one unit here, it will be two units up. One unit in x, two units up for a gradient of two. The rate of change is constant no matter where you are. This is not always the case. For example, if you see in this case, we are talking about the distance time graph. So this is not a linear graph. As we have learned, okay, for non-linear graphs, at every point, there is a different gradient. So in this case, uh, we can find okay, the rate of change at different points by finding the gradient at specific points itself. So that's the basics behind the rate of change. We're trying to find right, the change in uh, one uh, variable divided or uh, taken as a ratio of another variable. So now, okay, for example, in the function y equals to x squared, if I were to find okay, uh, the gradient function, okay, differentiate y with respect to x, so if let's say I substitute it, so now if y is equals to x squared, if I differentiate y with respect to x, I will get 2x. So now, okay, the big idea here is about notations. If I put x equals to 1, okay, this may not be familiar to you. This is a notation that I'm substituting x equals to 1 into dy dx. So here is 2 times 1 equals to 2. So it means, okay, for y equals to x squared, when x is equals to 1, the gradient is equals to 2. Okay, so that's how we can uh, denote this. I will now share with you an example and then you will try a, a one by a question by yourself and this will be the end of this sub chapter. It's a very quick sub chapter. Okay, so example five. Example five is talking about oil leaking out from a red tanker. You can actually uh, find this question on page 35 of the textbook itself and it's given by A equals to 16T. Okay, where A is the area in km square and T is the number of days since the leakage begin. So first and foremost for part one. So let's do question one first. If the shape of the oil slick can be modeled by a circle, write an expression for the radius after T days. So simply from what we have learned in primary school itself, A is equals to pi r square. Why pi r square? Because we know there is a shape of a circle. However, for this question, we also know that the area is actually equal to 16t. So now, if I want to write an expression for the radius, what I'm trying to do is to make radius the subject of the formula. So if I start that, I can say this, pi r square is area is equal to 16t. Notice that I've placed okay, the radius on the, the pi r square on the left hand side so that later on when I need to make uh, r the subject is actually easier. Dividing both sides by pi, I got 16t over pi. I square root, I will get square root of 16t over pi. Okay. 
Now, if you want to actually simplify this, what we can do here is this. If you focus, I have root of 16 over root of pi times the root of t. So I get 4 over root pi times root of t. So I've made r the subject of the formula. Actually, if you had wanted to leave it in this form, it's fine. It's just that later, when we actually need to do the differentiation in part 2, okay, it might be a bit more tricky for you to actually start that. So now, in part 2 itself, they ask, okay, what is the rate at which the radius is increasing after t days? So, rate increasing after t days, basically, we are going to differentiate r with respect to t. So, we are trying to find right, the change in the radius over the change in the number of days. In this day, in the case, is t. So, from the previous part, we know that r is equal to 4 over square root of pi times t. Uh, square root of t rather sorry so now i rewrite this as 4 over square root of pi times t to the power of half so if i differentiate r with respect to t i bring okay half okay times 4 over square root pi times t minus half so if i simplify i get 2 over root pi times root t Okay, this is it. You want to simplify the 2 over root of pi times t is also possible, but I think I shall leave it as such. So in part 3, they ask, how fast is the radius increasing after 10 days? So when t equals to 10, let's use the notation that we just learned. Uh, you will differentiate r with respect to t when my t value is equals to 10. So what I get is 2 over square root of pi times square root of 10 from my previous part 2. So if you use your calculator, you will find that this is 0 0.357 km. Okay, and that's it. Uh, I see that the book actually converted it into... Uh, 357 meters, but never mind, 0 0.357 km per day. So the radius is actually increasing at 0 0.357 km per day uh, after 10 days. So on the 10th day, uh, every day it will be a bit different. So it just happens on the 10th day itself, it's actually increasing at 0 0.357 km per day because the what I call the curve uh, has a different gradient and different points. So at t equals to 10, it happens to be... So if you sub in t equals to 9, actually you will get a different value for how fast the is increasing after 10 days. It's not a constant rate of change. Now, this is try 5. If uh, you would like, it can be found in your textbook on page 35. Uh, once, please pause the video and try it out. Okay, but never mind, I can give you some pointers first. So this is about spherical balloon. Spherical, spherical balloon, you must remember that the volume is given by 4 over 3 pi r cubed. Okay, let me write that out. So volume of a sphere is equals to 4 over 3 pi r cubed. Okay, so now uh, they ask you for the rate of change of the volume. So in case you need a clue for this, you are differentiating V with respect to T. Now part 2, how fast the volume increasing when... Uh, the uh, radius is 8 cm. Okay, so we have to go and find that. Okay, what is uh, dv dt when r is equals to 8 cm? And then what's the rate of change of the surface area of the balloon? So surface area, actually we're trying to find dA dt itself. And finally, how fast is the surface area changing when the radius is 8 cm? So now, okay, not only do we need volume, we also need the surface area of a sphere. And that's given by 4 pi r squared. Okay, I shall carry on to give you the answers in 3, 2, 1. Okay, for part one, okay, if we let the radius of the balloon be r, okay, the volume of sphere, this you have to know this, you need to memorize this. This is the volume, 
J is given by that. Notice that um, it, we have actually let the radius be R and notice that uh, in this case the radius is grown to 2T. Hence there is this uh, what I call we have changed r into 2t be very careful the brackets so if r is 2t there's a bracket to r so 2t cube will give you 8t cube so the volume if you simplify gives you 32 pi t cube over 3 so if i want to find the rate of change of volume i'm differentiating volume with respect to time okay the 3 okay will come then we have this then 3 minus 1 hence we get 32 pi t square cm cube per second so uh, if i want to find the rate of change of volume uh, when my t value or my, my radius is equals to 8 cm okay so now uh, earlier, I know that my radius is 8 cm, so the radius is equal to 2t as given in the question. I solve for my t value is equals to 4. You can always make use of our new what I call notation where t equals to 4 and you substitute it into 32 pi times 4 squared. Hence, I get 512 pi cm cubed per second. Okay, so this is it for part 1 and part 2. So, it, this particular moment in time, when the radius is 8 cm, the volume is increasing at 512 pi cm cubed per second. For try 5 part 3, okay, surface area, i given you, you have to memorize this, A is 4 pi r square, just as what we did earlier in part 1 and part 2, radius is equals to 2t as given. So, 2t square will give you 4t square times 4 pi will give me 16 pi t squared. Now, the rate of change of the surface, sorry, okay, rate of change of surface area, we will differentiate area with respect to time. So, I will have 16 pi t square d dt. Okay, what we have is 2 times 16 pi t 2 minus 1. That's why I get 32 pi t as shown down here. Okay, 16 pi is <coughs> excuse me, 16 pi is a constant. So now when uh, t equals to 4, so I differentiate a with respect to t, my t value is equals to 4. I use this, I take 32 pi times 4 equals to 1 to 8 pi cm square per second. So hence what I'm saying is that the surface area is changing at the rate of 1 to 8 pi cm square per second at this moment in time when the radius is 8 cm. And that is it for this uh, sub chapter 12.